All right. Well, good morning. Thank you for joining us for another edition of our real estate backstory. So uh, this is uh, this is Christmas week. We have Christmas coming up on Sunday. So we want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. My name is Alan Rich. I'm the managing broker here at Maximum One Realty and Realtor Partners. My name is Ming Richardson. I'm the compliance broker for Maximum One Realty and Realtor Partners. And, uh, you know, every week we bring this to you. We, we've done this now for the last, well, ever since COVID started, we've been doing this. And so we're going to continue into uh, 2023, the whole nine yards here. Um, even through the knee surgery. Even through the knee <laughs> surgery. So, and and uh, I'm I'm doing a lot better on that side of things. So I'm, I'm starting to uh, hobble less and move more. So, uh, so that's kind of progressing forward kind of the way that we wanted it to. Um, all that being said, we kind of want to jump into something that, that we've been hearing a lot about. And, and, and that is the, the recession word. And, and, and you got to understand that, you know, first of all, recession, um, whenever folks start talking about recession, immediately they start going back to 2008. They start going back to what happened in 2008. And honestly, you know, we were part of the cause, if not the primary cause for the, the 2008 recession. We all turned into Oprah Winfrey of real estate. Like, you get a house, you get a house. If you got a pulse, you get a house too. And so there was a lot of other issues back then, but that's not what we have going on right now. And so even though there is a lot of talk about recession, and I'm not, and, and I'm not, honestly, I think, I think housing's been in a recession since about mid-year. Um, and, and just because, you know, that there is a recession, like, like, for the vast majority of realtors, it all comes down to what's your mindset. Because we're still selling a lot of houses. We're still a lot of activity going on. And, and, and you know, we were around in 2008 and 2002 and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah, we're kind of dating ourselves. But but the <laughs> bottom line is, is every time there's, there's a recession like this and every time that, that there is a market correction, uh, there's people that talk themselves out of business. But we have to understand that, that First of all, right now, the labor market is remaining very strong and it's going to continue. We, we don't have enough people to do the jobs that need to be doing right now. Even though there's been all these big corporate layoffs and things like that, we're not seeing, you know, like, 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 like unemployment claims are con well, continuing down. Well, what do you mean that kind of stuff. strong? You just can't pick and choose like you could when mm -hmm. the, at the height of a labor uh, job opportunity. So Still uh, really strong, yeah. It is very strong yeah. and people are staying put versus jumping up and down and going from one company to another. Yeah. Another thing is that we have less riskier loan and, you know, CFPB oh, yeah. has been done really good job job in monitoring uh ensure there's good policy and procedures in place so therefore it's not like back in 2008 where state of income no doc loans and oh, stuff yeah. like that so, yeah like and then and then all the the fraud and the valuation side of things you know uh, you know that there, kind of like, there that, people that went to prison for yeah, um should for have, yeah. and so you know all that we still have a a deficit of housing and with upcoming millennial populate uh millennial population group yeah. that is in high demand the largest population group we have are millennials and they're all going to be reaching first time home buyer age over the next four years so you know this is you know we have we have more more demand we have lower supply at the same time, we have like the, some of the lowest foreclosure rates that we've ever seen. And you actually checked last night. There's only 15 foreclosures in Georgia. The That's state. the entire state of Georgia yeah. and the hub website. So the bottom line here is that recession doesn't mean property values go down. And for the average consumer, how, how they rate a housing recession is, is my house worth less than... Uh, and then it was last week, last year, that sort of thing. And we're not, and, and especially here in Georgia, we're going to show you some really, really cool information about what's going on in, in the Atlanta market and that kind of thing coming up. Uh, and so all this to be said, don't put yourself in a position where, you know, like I've decided the market's going down. I've decided a recession is going to hurt me. I've decided all these kind of things. And then, and then because you made these decisions, that's what's going to affect your business. That's what's going to mean that you either succeed or don't. It's going to be, and then, you know, I know that, you know, there was a meme going around this past week talking about, and it had a picture of, of, uh, of brokers putting on clown shoes saying that, you know, uh, how a recession is good. I'm not saying a recession is good, but I, I do believe that 
mindset is the most important thing that you have moving forward right now. I had an agent call me last week, says, I'm just tired of being around folks that are negative about our industry. And uh, I said, then, you, surround, <laughs> you know, the thing is, surround yourself with people that can think outside the box, that are still pursuing their business mm -hmm. uh, versus someone that's just going to, to, um, I guess, become a victim of the situation versus yep. being a solution of the situation. All right. We want to kind of jump over here and, and start sharing some data here with you. Um, as soon as I can figure out where my thing is. On the left. On the left. There we are. <laughs> Still figuring everything out. So, um, you know, so, you know, we got our numbers in on consumer pricing and it rose less than they thought it was going to. So inflation is still high. No one, no one thinks 7% is great by mm -hmm. any means, but it, it was less than what they were expecting at the same time. So are we seeing an improvement when it comes to that? We are, and and see the the reason that the inflation is an important number for us is, you know, inflation is what's driving uh, the the stock market. It's what's driving um, our interest rates and those kind of things. And so, as we see inflation mitigate, we're going to see our interest rates moving, because the federal funds rate, while it doesn't, you know. It affect mortgages in an right. inadvertent way. It's not a direct consultation of, or there. So at the same time last week, because on Wednesday, the Fed raised the rates by half a point. And they, they say that more is to come, but the half point rate raise is not, uh, first of all, it, it's, you know, the last four have all been 75 basis points, which is already huge. Absolutely. Um, the last one was much more moderated. And so, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, this, this is kind of what our federal funds target rate is. And you can see that we're almost back to where we were in 2008. And they're saying that they want to see us somewhere at the five and a quarter, five and a half rate kind of thing. So there's going to, they're going to continue to keep moving this up. But the reason that at the same time that we saw the federal funds rate go up, we didn't see interest rates move up. As a matter of fact, we saw interest rates come down last week. And that's because our I interest, guess. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're seeing where, you know, it's we're down about a full percentage point from where we were in October kind of thing. So, you know, this is a really good thing. You know, we're somewhere between six and a quarter, six and six and a third, or six and an eighth kind of thing right now. And so mortgage rates are moving in the right direction. But we're seeing that. Uh, and, and as inflation continues to abate, you know, um, we're going to keep seeing interest rates moving down. And as such, at the same time, purchase applications are, are up. OK, so this is really, really good. Um, NAA can't, NAA, NAR uh, came out and, and, you know, they're forecasting about 4.78 million existing home sales. Now, that's less than the 5 million um that total we... number of sales that, that we need and kind of thing. And so, you know, overall, you know, they're looking at, at, at as a nation that the market, I mean, that, that property values are remaining relatively flat. Now, that being said, you're going to have markets that, that are running higher and you're going to have markets running lower in order to have that flat market that they're really looking at. Um, guess where we are? Well, we're in Atlanta. And so they also released the top 10 real estate markets to watch in 2023 and into the future. And the number one market in the United Hi. States hot lamp. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and how they rank this kind of thing is, is they went through housing affordability, number of renters who can afford to buy, grab, job growth, uh, growth of, in, of in, industry jobs, uh, in, you know, information industry jobs, uh, you know. Higher share of information industry. How many people were moving in, all that yeah. kind of stuff, population growth. In Atlanta and, you know, here in Georgia, we are a great place to be. So, we have to kind of remember a couple of different things. One, like like, like when you see property values declining, uh, you know, they're probably going to see 10, 12 percent property value declines in California. Mm -hmm. And that will uh, that will absorb a lot of the real estate news going on out there. That's not well, where we are. Real news is going to capture yeah. what is sensational. So therefore, they're going to give you the biggest number, the biggest outcome. 
and to put in whatever message they're trying to put in. So but look, look where the hot markets are. We're all here in the South, baby. Mm-hmm. You know, South's got it going on. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're in a really good place right now. And, and if all you do is watch the national um, real estate news, you're going to think, man, things, can, things can be bad. You know, we were just talking about this. And so guess what? We are in the number one future real estate market to look for for the next year. And so if you can't be successful in that in this type of market, guess whose fault that is? I hate to break it to you, but it's yours, Buttercup. So that's kind of how we are. Be nice. I, I'm well, I'm being nice. I'm being well, what up. he's saying is that yeah. you can make a difference. It's up to you yeah. to make a difference. And, and not every real estate agent have the same goal and same business plan. So just yeah. understand with that said, you can make your goal come alive if you work at it. Yeah. So now, um, you know, Redfin also released because Redfin feels that, that you know, that property values nationwide are going to go down about 4%. We're not looking at that. We're looking at around 4 to 5% property value increase here in the Atlanta market, especially. Um, and so, you know, they said, you know, if, if property values do drop by 4%, what's that mean? Well, only three out of a hundred pandemic home buyers would fall underwater. And, and the key word here is pandemic, meaning people that have bought homes in the last two years, only three out of a hundred of those. Now it's a, it's like one out of a thousand if you bought before mm-hmm. the pandemic, right? Because property values have continued to increase. We're it's- not looking at people being underwater. There's no foreclosure market coming. There's no big jump in these kind of things. They are, they are slight some. And I will tell you, when I review the HUD home website and look at the pictures, those homes typically have a lot of deferred maintenances to where a lot of property owners are just like, you know what? You know, even if I fix it up, it's going to cost me X amount of dollar by the time I fix it up to where it yep. needs to be for the property value is not worth it. Or, you know, there's time that people just have major incidents in their life, whether it's medical uh, yeah. relationship or what have you. Um, there's it, always going to be some. It's going to be always. a hard decision, yeah. but nine out of 10, most of our homeowners do have equity in their home. So um, as far as looking at the numbers here, so this, you know, this, this is also from Redfin as far as sharing uh, you know, overall data, you can see that our new listings here in the Atlanta market way down. We don't have enough listings. And so it's always going to be supply versus demand. And we don't have enough supply right now to meet the demand that we do have. Uh, And so you can see, just like the rest of the nation, we, we, you know, number of homes sold is down, but we're actually trending up, which is really interesting right now. Uh, New listing median prices, we're seeing where those median listing prices are, are leveling off. And honestly, that's what we need. We cannot continue to run double digit Absolutely. price growth. But if we continue to run somewhere in that three to four to five percent property value, that's, that's going to work out really good for us. And so here's our median sale price. You can see that we're still running over last year. So we're not looking at any kind of, of drastic drop or anything like that, especially in the Atlanta market. Again, who's the number one? We, we are. are. Right. And so uh, total days to close. You can see there are days on market while it is trending up. Still the lowest that we've seen in the last 10 years. Uh, active listings. Now our total active listings has been increasing. However, that's trending down right now. And so yet we are not over 2019. We are over 2020 and 2021 on total number of active listings, but these are listings that are starting to sit on the market for a little bit. They're starting to get a little bit stale. And see, we always come out, you know, like on January 1, things really start to heat up. Right. And so, you know, like 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 these this is the inventory that's going to be going. And right now we're in a holiday season. So a lot of people are not looking yeah. at moving. If they were moving, they would have done it back in November. Yeah. So you see our median days on market here is trending up, but still historically we're still very, very low. Uh active listing with price drops. Now, this is something that we're actually glad to see, which is you know. It has been extremely high. We've been one of the highest markets with properties taking price reductions, but we were also, we had, we had a lot of sellers that were, we'll just say, overly optimistic, might be a nice way to put it. Um, but, you know, we're seeing where that's coming down now. And so I'm, I'm glad to see that, that that our sellers are starting to come to a more realistic, reasonable, reasonable, that's a good way to put it kind of thing. So this is our weeks of supply right now. 
And so we're, you know, we're just now getting up to where we have a total number of supply that, that, that you know, but, you know, like even though you see that we're that we are now on total weeks of supply back where we were in 2019, guess what? 2019 was still a seller's market. Absolutely. So uh, average list ratio here in the Atlanta market, and so list to, list to sale price, we're, we're at 98. percent So we're moving back into some very normal historical norm places for us to be. And then pending sales, we've known pending sales are continuing to trend down. Uh, that that's something that you know until those interest rates really start start getting you know if we can get under six I think we're really going to see that trend start to really shift especially here in the Atlanta area. Well, you got a lot of pent up demands. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, right now, um, you know, um, the the American uh, or the, the U.S. Census Bureau released that 19 million renters are burdened by housing costs, meaning that. Uh, oh, they're spending more than 30% on their housing costs. And, and, and I, mm -hmm. I don't take that lightly. And, and we have to understand, though, that, it, 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 you know, for our renters, that's not a healthy place to be. And no. that's also not a safe place to be. As and right now, we're seeing where prices are flattening out, which is something that we need. We're also seeing where interest rates are coming down right now. But we're not looking at property values dropping. And so that means that rental rates are going to continue to increase for folks. And yes, it may be more difficult to buy right now. But if you buy, you know, like, like five years from now, you're still going to, you know, the average renter only has a net worth of, you know, like $6,000, $6, yeah. $6,800 kind of thing, yeah. as opposed to $200,000. So it's a really, really big deal. And that we we want to help, and, and the vast majority of our millennials are renters right now. That's a big deal. At the same time, house flipping has declined across the U.S., uh, and so uh, investors are uh, now on the positive side. We're seeing where more flippers are flipping and selling to FHA buyers, and we've kind of been seeing that at mm -hmm. the brokerage level as well. FHA is, you know, it used to be, it was like, well, it's not cash. Not I'm not talking. And then, then it was all had to be conventional. And now folks are being much more open at FHA as well as we're seeing a lot more DPA programs yep. being utilized now. And VA loans too. Thank goodness. So now on the, I guess you call it negative side, but like, like um, five counties in the U S um, have some of the highest home flipping rates. Guess what? Clayton County is the second highest County in the nation on investor flipping activity and so um you know man, we, we flipped for a long time in clayton county and we'll feel the same thing but but a lot of these counties are in georgia kind of thing and so i say i say, um, and that's because I say, well there's a lot of investor activity still going on here, yes. here in the atlanta it's just because a lot of investors bought during downturn of market and they were picking up his home for less than fifty thousand dollars so all you have to do is do a minor repairs and cosmetic um, updates uh, and turn right around sell for minimum 250 It's really a no-brainer for them. Yeah, we wanted to, sh we, we kind of want to wrap up here sharing the, the you know, the here in the Atlanta area, there's a, there's a high-end home builder that, that got arrested after clients took him to court kind of thing. And, and I'm not, you know, we really don't have a horse in this race. I'm not you know, th this, but this, this is awareness. But th yeah, exactly. We just want to keep you guys aware that you know, in any market, there there are people that that are that can that can be predatory, and so uh, especially when it comes to builders, uh, really make sure that if you are helping your buyers work with a builder, that they are not just some guy with a pickup truck. Uh, you know, that that they really do have. The credentials to build, they know what they're doing, and you know, like it's always like, good. Check the references. You know, and 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 you know, this guy, he was a smaller builder kind of thing, and and pretty shady in a lot of things. You know, just at least on the outside from looking in, I can't speak firsthand, and I don't want to try and uh, you know say anything inappropriate. But by the same token, you know, I think that you know. A lot of times our buyers get very excited, especially when you start talking about new construction. And a lot of times they're coming to us saying, hey, do you know any builders? Do you know any builders who can build? And, and our take on finding builders is, man, they are they are in short supply. And that worries me. Anytime that, that there is a short supply of builders, we see where there's the chance for some for like Bubba and a pickup truck to show up and some people will will jump on them to, to and then they Which end up make, having problems. Right. So. 
please, you know, vet, I mean, and it's not just for builders, right? Uh, you know, home works. warranties, home inspectors, all these kind of things. So like, like, like your clients will really, really count whoever you recommend. Uh, that, that That's going to be a, a direct reflection on you. So make, make sure that, that you're doing your, your homework on that kind of thing. And just one public announcement. Uh, when you guys are dealing with new construction builder, if your name is not on the contract, don't assume that they'll give you a commission. Yep. There are some builders out there, not saying any names, that will tell you one thing verbally. And then when it comes to closing time, you're out. Yeah. Now this week, no CE classes. Okay. Uh, no CE classes for much. this week or next week kind of thing. We, we, uh, we used to schedule some during the week of, you know, Christmas and New Year's and no one came. So we stopped we doing, it. yeah, and we understand there's things going on. So we don't have any CE classes going on this week or next week. But, uh, you know, there's still a lot of places you can go to realestatebackstory.com if you want to see replays of any of our CE classes that we've done, that kind of stuff. Uh, continue to spend time working on your business and engaging. We hope that you have, guys have a very Merry Christmas. We love and appreciate y'all so if much. If you don't mind agents, do go in and tell your staff member and tell them that you appreciate them because it is, um, they're the backbone for you and support. So yeah. please do get take a moment and tell them thank you. All right. Call, text, or smoke signals. We answer it all. Thank you all. Have, have a Merry Christmas.